Matt Yasa here, going to be demonstrating a traditional technique called the Marini. And I'll start out by gathering up some of this white out from tag glass. It's an opaque white color. Opaque being non-transparent as light won't pass through it, only reflect off of it. And it is a heat sensitive color. That's why I'm gathering it up farther out in the flame where it's cooler. And the Marini technique is a pretty cool technique and also very functional. It has a lot of good applications for making pendants or marbles especially and other kind of cool decorative items. And it basically involves creating a large pattern with various techniques. And then you can heat that section of glass up and pull it out into what they call cane. And that'll give you that same pattern you made, just reduced down in size. And then you'll have it pulled out into a longer rod that you can then cut little chips out to get little copies of that pattern. So I did a little pre-shaping here and it looks a lot like a big marshmallow. You definitely wouldn't want to eat it though. It's about a thousand degrees right now. And I'm flattening out the bottom a little bit before I work on the other two sides to make a triangle. And that's because it'll be a YouTube play button marini. I'm doing the white play button now, and I'll be adding some red later. And I'll marvel out two sides by using my graphite plate and my paddle. I just need to hold it at the right angle to get a nice edge there. And as you practice, you do get more creative with your tools. But as I've said before, your hands are always your best tools. You know, those are the ones you're going to practice with the most. So I've attached a punty to the other side and I've taken off my first one. And this is so I can shape that end section and have the whole thing uniformly shaped. So I'm pulling off a little clear from that rod. And I'll finish shaping that end before I start applying the red glass. So to apply the red, I'll go ahead and heat up a section at the end of the rod and begin to swipe across the surface. And as I'm drawing it out, I want to keep that rod and the surface both inside the flame. And that'll just make sure everything is molten hot and that you don't end up trapping air as you're laying it down. And I'm also pushing the rod into that crevice of the last swipe. And that way that I get one nice even layer and I don't leave any gaps for air to get trapped into. It's really a balance of temperature. You, know, you don't want too hot or too cold. And now I've got one layer of red on right now. I'm gonna go ahead and heat it up and flatten it out a little bit to see what it looks like to figure out where I need to add some more. Now I'll add some more red on the front on both sides to turn it more into a red rectangle. And you might have noticed that the rod is clear. And that's because it's a reactive color. It has copper inside of it that will react to the atmosphere and the heat and will strike to a red once it cools. And they call that color change striking. You can strike it in the flame or kiln strike it. And the more you strike it again and again, the deeper the color will get. So as I reheat some of the red areas, it'll actually turn back to clear and strike again. I want to be careful not to overstrike it as the red can end up turning more opaque and kind of look like a salmon red color. And real quick, I wanted to thank all the new subscribers that have joined up. The channel is nearing a thousand subscribers. That's really cool. It's been growing pretty quickly. And I had a few people comment about where they found the information and the videos helpful for themselves to get started. And that's kind of the main idea is to get some good helpful information out there and raise the popularity of glass blowing and lamp working. You know, bring it more mainstream or have it more of an optional high school class you could take. You know, that'd be really cool. I think I would have taken it if I would have had it back in high school. And now I'm putting some clear glass on the outsides 
to turn it back into a circle from a rectangle for the pull out. And that'll just help the red keep its rectangular shape and it won't actually be seen on the chips once you melt them in. And next I'll attach some large punties to the ends, heat up that section of glass and pull my pattern out. Also real quick for reaching a thousand subscribers, I'm planning on doing one of my biggest projects yet. It'll be big, involve moving parts, water, and hopefully generate some power. It's gonna be pretty cool. Make sure you don't miss it. And now with that heated up, I'll go ahead and begin to pull it out. And as I do this, it won't distort the shape or the pattern on the inside, but just shrink it down. And as I'm heating it up to pull it out some more, I need to make sure not to twist it. You know, both my hands have to move evenly together or else I could end up twisting up the pattern. And now I'll focus on those end areas and pull them out a little bit more. Try to use up all the glass that I have there. And then after it's pulled out, I'll go in with some glass snippers and snip off little chips of the Marini and then I'll have multiple play buttons. And this is kind of a simple example of the Marini technique here. You can really put a lot of detail into your patterns and then there's also other ways to do it on a larger scale to make more at once. And then I'll clip a few chips off this cane. And here is the ending product. I could make it into a marble or a pendant or even attach it to something else. But I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and encase one in clear glass and then I'll put a lens on one side as a cool way to show you the lensing effect. So I warmed up the end of that tube and flattened it. And I'll drop in my play button and begin to melt it in. So I'll heat up the area around the play button and suck some air out of the tube, which will bring those sidewalls in to start the encasement process. And you normally don't suck air out of the tube. This is probably one of the few examples you would. But now with it fully encased, I'll go ahead and heat up another area above it and pull and blow to create a long, thin tube. And then I can just pop a hole in there pretty easily and rip it right off. So if you don't blow into it as you pull, the tube will end up closing up in the middle. So by puffing into it, you help it hold its diameter, you know, its shape, but then thin those walls out really, really thin. And it's kind of crazy to see how long that tube gets with such little glass. You know, it's just stretching that little bit of glass a long ways. But now with the shaping finished up, here it is. And as I rotate it from one side to the other, you'll notice the size of that play button shrinks and increases. That's the lensing effect I was talking about. So the back, you can see the Marini's true size and the front would be the magnified side. And I think that's pretty cool. You know, when you look at it through the side and you start to tilt it around, it's almost like magic because you see the edge of the Marini just appearing out of nowhere. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Feel free to hit that like button and leave a comment. And I'll see you on this next big project coming up on the Matt Yasa channel.